You don't look anything like you do on the news. Yeah, you look downright robust. Well, I have good days and bad. Pilates helps. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 movies so bad they were pulled from theaters. I'm worried about what's gonna happen to you. I wish I knew. For this list, we're looking at films that bombed so badly and suffered such negative word of mouth that studios either pulled them early or a significant portion of theaters stopped showing them. Which of these films were you able to see before they pulled the plug? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Honky Tonk Freeway With a title like that, the writing was on the wall for this one long before the name was on the marquee. Then again, a film that was allegedly financed as part of a tax evasion scheme isn't likely to be overly concerned with integrity, is it? I don't know if that's what I really want out of life. At the time of its release, Variety described the flop of a film as devoid of any basic humorous appeal, which for an ensemble comedy film is not great. Against a then massive budget for a comedy film of $24 million, it made a paltry $2 million and change, leading it to being pulled from theaters after a single week. Yikes. Honky Tonk Freeway. Get off on it. Number 19. Paranoia. Roll call! Harrison Ford, Gary Oldman, Liam Hemsworth, and Amber Heard. You'd think this film had something, but theaters and audiences felt differently. This not-so-thrilling thriller about corporate espionage was critically derided as painfully unoriginal and just plain boring. By week three, it had dropped from 2,459 theaters to just 392. For hit or miss director Robert Luketic, who has given us such gems as Legally Blonde and misfires like When a Date with Tad Hamilton, this fell squarely within the latter category. It did so poorly that American distributor Relatively Media reportedly fired its head of marketing one week after the film's release. Okay, I think it's time for you to go. Number 18. Alone in the Dark Few names send a shudder down a critic's spine quite like Uwe Boll, and it's not because he's an effective horror director. No, Uwe Boll is a filmmaker whose work is so despised that a petition for him to retire reached over 350,000 signatures. <laughs> Alone in the Dark was his second loosely based video game adaptation to infuriate fans, following House of the Dead. While the latter managed to make back its budget, this critically reviled film, considered among the worst ever made, only made $10 million against a $20 million budget, and was pulled from theaters after three weeks. I don't believe it. Number 17. From Justin to Kelly The first season of American Idol may have been a game-changing moment in pop culture history, but that doesn't mean that its final two had the chops to carry a film to box office success. Sure about this? Oh yeah, it won't hurt me a bit. Justin and Kelly may have gone to Hollywood, but should they have? Considered one of the worst movies of all time, their film earns just $4.9 million against a budget of $12 million. Given the massive success of American Idol, making so little was a truly remarkable feat. After debuting in 1,969 cinemas, by week three, it had suffered an impressive 96.2% drop to just 108 theaters. Number 16. Live by Night. The one-two punch of Ben Affleck starring in a Ben Affleck-directed movie has given us the critical darlings and box office successes The Town and Argo. Live by Night was based on a novel by Dennis Lehane, the same writer whose work served as the basis for Ben's 2007 critical hit Gone Baby Gone. So all things considered, in theory, it had the markings of a hit film. 
In practice, however, it proved to be one of the biggest box office flops of Ben's career as an actor or director and the single worst third-week theater drop in cinematic history, with 2,659 theaters pulling out. We had a good thing going here and you fucked it all up in one day. Number 15. Morbius If you saw the hashtag Morbius sweep back when this film came out in April of 2022, some people might have you convinced it was the most financially and critically successful movie of all time. I've become something different. I feel a kinship with these creatures. That, of course, couldn't be further from the truth. Morbius actually did well at the box office on its first day, but quickly plummeted, resulting in the worst earnings of any tentpole superhero movie. It's a curse. It quickly took on a life of its own online, however, inspiring a bunch of hilarious memes. This is when Sony decided it was Morbin time to put the movie back in theaters, where they'd cash in on all of the laughs, right? I could ask you to stop if you like, put us out of our misery. Wrong. The movie did only 85k on its day of re-release and was then pulled permanently. You know what I say, it's key to remember whiskey to forget. Number 14. Glitter Unless it's starring Eminem, very few people want to see a musical artist play a character that's pretty much just themselves in a blatant vanity project. Mariah Carey has tried to blame this film's failure on the fact it was released on 9-11, even though it was actually released on the much less traumatic 9-21. But the fact that critics and fans alike loathed the film seems a more likely explanation. By week two, many of the 1,200 two theaters had pulled out. After just 27 days in theaters, it closed, having earned back only a quarter of its $22 million budget. All that glitters clearly ain't box office gold. At the end of the day, it is all about you, right? You Number 13. Postal. Uva Bowl strikes again. We've discussed the petition, but were you aware of the whole boxing thing? Uwe Boll got so sick of the critics tearing apart his films that he challenged them to an actual fistfight, and a few accepted. Then you read the threat and you know they really, really hate me. And I said, okay guys, let's go in the ring and let's have a boxing match together. Uwe Boll actually boxed five of his biggest critics. Though he won all five matches, this 2007 action comedy, another video game-inspired flick, saw Bull get KO'd at the box office. Though a 1,500 screen release had been arranged, distributors pulled out before it even hit theaters, and in the end, it was only shown in a measly 21 locations. I regret nothing. Number 12. It's Pat. I know, let's go to the burger bag and get some fries. <clears throat> SNL has transitioned a number of its sketches to the big screen over the years, with varying results. They rarely receive positive reviews, but often perform reasonably well at the box office and develop cult-like followings of fans. No other film in the history of Saturday Night Live, however, has failed quite as spectacularly as this 1994 train wreck. There was so little faith in Pat's performance at the box office that it only opened in 33 theaters. And even then, it was pulled after opening weekend, having scraped together a minuscule $60,822. Number 11. Mordecai I had no idea I was so deep in Her Majesty's hole. Remember when Johnny Depp's name alone was more than enough to guarantee a movie's financial security? Oh, how the mighty have fallen. It was clear that Depp's star power had dwindled when he appeared in this flop from director David Kep. It made me feel dirty. The R-rated crime caper comedy received scathing reviews and made less than $5 million on its opening weekend, despite also starring Gwyneth Paltrow, Ewan McGregor, and Jeff Goldblum. In its third weekend, Lionsgate pulled it from almost 2,400 theaters. As such, the film remains one of the most embarrassing blemishes on Depp's career. It's unbearable. Number 10. Swept Away What have you done to me? Madonna is an incredible star, but she hasn't really made the best choices throughout her film career. Not only is this remake of the 1974 Italian film a poor use of the Queen of Pop, it's also a poor use of her then-husband, director Guy Ritchie. If 
you love me, you can love me anywhere. I want to know. His venture into rom-com territory proved fruitless, as critics declared the film a disaster, resulting in a 5% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Initially released to only 196 screens for two weeks and leaving cinemas in only 59, the film barely made less than $600,000 domestically during its run. Where is God when you need him? Number 9. Seeking Justice Nobody said anything in the agreement about killing anybody. So get the hell out of my life. It often seems like Nicolas Cage is willing to take almost any role that comes his way. With a couple exceptions, most of them have been unremarkable, but none more than this 2011 action thriller. It received the typical critical reception you'd expect from a run-of-the-mill Cage-fronted action movie, meaning a 27% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I, I, I really don't know what you're talking about. As bad as its critical failure was, its commercial failure was even worse. Over the course of three weeks, it dropped from just over 200 theaters to eight theaters, making less than $500,000 in the US. Unfortunately, Cage didn't learn from this experience as he found himself facing a similar situation the next year with the film Stolen. <laughs> Number 8. Max Steele. You're not Jim McGrath's son, are you? No Big Stars. Based off a series of toys, a 0% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like this movie was tailor-made for this list. Based on the Mattel toys and animated series of the same name, Open Road Films was probably expecting a franchise starter with this high-tech superhero, but had their hopes dashed when the film was met with a critical beatdown, making only $2.2 million on its first weekend, far below even the lowest expectations. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm here for you, Max. After being in release for three weeks, the movie was pulled from its theaters, solidifying its positions as one of the biggest bombs of 2016. Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Number 7. Mr. Magoo There he is! Uh, yeah, over there. Oh, over there! Over there! Most of the movies on this list are here just because they were critical and commercial bombs, while this live-action adaptation of the beloved cartoon was definitely both of those things, it got pulled because of outcry from a very specific group. Despite the disclaimer at the end that stated Leslie Nielsen's bumbling portrayal of the nearsighted title character was not meant to be an accurate depiction, Disney was forced to pull the film from theaters after two weeks due to protests and outcries from blind and nearsighted groups. Why aren't you a sight for sore eyes? The British Federation of the Blind even petitioned to ban the film's UK release, as it would bring ridicule upon blind and partially sighted people. You're the ugliest child I've ever seen. Number 6. Delgo. Delgo? At your service, Your Highness. Starring Freddie Prinze Jr. and Anne Bancroft in her last role, this computer animated feature cost $40 million to make. Delgo received a critical beating for mostly being a poor retread of better fantasy films, and was released during a holiday season that had many superior cinematic offerings for families. Because of this, Delgo set a record nobody wanted to earn. It had the worst opening for a film playing in over 2,000 theaters at the time, and is the lowest grossing computer animated film of all time, making less than $1 million and was quickly forgotten about, leaving theaters after a mere week. At your service. Number 5. Gem and the Holograms How do I look? Ladies? Truly? Truly, truly? This film was based on the animated series about Jem and her band The Holograms, but failed to capture the spirit of its source material. Because of this and poor reviews, the musical adventure earned the distinction of having the worst wide box office opening of 2015, and the fourth worst ever for a film playing in over 2,000 theaters. You're internet famous. That's like the second best thing to being actually famous. Then, in an unprecedented move, Universal pulled 
pulls the film from its still wide release two weeks after it opened, something that had never been done for a film released on this level. It ended with $2.3 million and the broken hearts of many children of the 80s. Do you think this is it? Number 4. The Garbage Pail Kids Movie We need a plan. We need a man! Yeah. To some audiences, this film falls into the so bad it's good category. Not the New York Times, though, who called it too repulsive for children or adults of any age. Nobody was going to see this movie when it was released, resulting in an opening weekend where it only made $661,000. <laughs> most likely sensing that having this cinematic abomination in theaters for a prolonged amount of time would only cause pain to moviegoers, the studio pulled it from cinemas, but the damage had been done. In its short run, the movie made $1.6 million and subjected an entire generation of families to an hour and a half of unfunny, gross-out humor. Well, perhaps it would have been safer to lock them away from the world. Number 3. Gigli tell me what we're supposed to do. The early 2000s romance between Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez was buzzy enough to keep the tabloid industry afloat for a few years, but could their love affair successfully translate to the silver screen? The short answer is no. The long answer is this $75 million rom-com tanked harder than any other movie in 2003. Oh, and in case you're interested, my life sucks. In its second weekend, Gigli dropped by nearly 82%, and by the third, only 73 theaters in the U.S. were showing it, an unprecedented flop for such a big-budget film. In addition to being withdrawn from U.S. cinemas, it was dropped by nearly every theater in the U.K. after its critical destruction. I don't find this funny. Number 2. Black Hat. You kidding me? This film not only had the star power of Chris Hemsworth and Viola Davis, but the legendary Michael Mann also directed it. However, it was saddled with a January release alongside the wide release of the juggernaut that was American Sniper. Plus, the reviews were mostly mixed. Because of this, the $70 million film earned a mere $4.4 million on its opening weekend, one of the worst debuts ever for a wide release. You're still gonna like me if I'm fixing garage door openers? After only two weeks, Universal pulled the film from all but 236 theaters, down from its widest release of over 2,500. To add insult to injury, it was also scrapped for theatrical release in Belgium and Hemsworth's native Australia. I'm sorry for what happened to you. Oh yeah, no, don't be. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. United Passions Who could have predicted that a film about FIFA executives wouldn't attract an audience? Everyone, apart from FIFA executives, apparently. The movie, which focuses on the founding of FIFA, was largely funded by FIFA and saw its U.S. release overlap with the massive 2015 FIFA corruption scandal. Are you mad? You couldn't write a more ironic real-world premise if you tried. An abysmal theatrical run saw the film make a laughable $918 in the US, and somewhere between $100,000 and $200,000 internationally against a reported estimated budget of $29 million. Unsurprisingly, it was pulled from most markets in a matter of days. I'm afraid that we have disappointed you. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.